In today's video, we'll dockerize a .NET application. We'll see how simple it is and how we can have it done in really just a few minutes. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Amichai, and in this channel, I talk about software architecture, design patterns, best practices, things that you want to be familiar with if you're a software engineer. This video is part seven in a series in which we're building a REST API completely from scratch using ASP.NET and following best practices, etc. So if you want to stay up to date with the videos as they come out, then make sure to smash the subscribe button. In any case, this video can be watched standalone from the overall series. So let's go ahead and dockerize our application. Now we aren't going to change anything other than creating a Docker file. And in the Docker file, we're going to have three stages. Stage number one is going to be the build stage. Stage number two is going to be the publish stage. And stage number three is going to be the run stage in which we're actually going to run our application. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use as the base image, the Microsoft.NET 8 SDK. So let's say over here, MCR, and then let's say Microsoft.com slash .NET slash SDK and the version that we want is eight. And the name that we're giving this entire stage is build. Now, what we want to do are two things. Number one, we want to go ahead and restore the project. And number two, we want to build the project. Now, we have only one project, meaning that we need to only restore the packages listed in our CS project. So currently we don't have anything, but let's set it up anyway. So what we want to do is we want to copy from the source and then one review and then we want to choose the CS project and we want to copy this entire thing into the one review folder inside source. Now that we have copied the CS project, then we can go ahead and run .NET restore. So let's say run .NET restore and let's specify the path, which is one review slash this thing over here. And once we are done with this, then we can go ahead and build our application. And the reason why we're separating it is because now we won't need to run the .NET restore unless we change one of the packages in our CS project. So as long as the CS project stays the same, we won't run .NET restore again. Build on the other hand, we want to run when any file changes, not just the CS project. So let's go ahead and copy now all the rest of the files into the one review folder. Then we can go ahead and actually build the product. So we can say .NET build, and we can specify the path to the CS project, which is still the same thing. So we're in source. So we're going to say one review slash one review dot CS project. We also want to say that the configuration is release and that the output directory is slash app slash build. Now, real quick, before we continue, I want to remind you that if you want to join our amazing, amazing Discord community, then you can do it for the price of a cup of coffee. Instead of buying your, the next cup of coffee, you should invest in my Patreon. And then not only will you join our Discord server, but also you'll get access to the source code of this video and every other video on this channel. Enough self-promotion, now back to the video. Okay, moving on to publish. So over here, let's say from build as publish, and this will be simply, let's move actually to source slash one review. So let's say source one review, and we can actually move this entire thing over here and then simply say one review over here. And now that we're in the one review folder, then we can simply say run .NET publish. And let's actually copy this entire thing. This is going to be .NET publish. And we're going to be publishing one review to app slash publish. That's it for publishing. So we have our artifacts in the publish folder. And now all we need to do is go ahead and run it. So what we want to do is we actually want to take only the ASP.NET runtime over here. We don't need the actual SDK. So we can go ahead and say ASP.NET. And basically what we want to do is we want to run the artifacts that we have inside the publish folder. So let's go ahead and say over here that the work there is now slash app. And also let's go ahead and copy from the publish stage. We want to copy slash app slash publish to here. So now overall we have inside the app folder, we have the publish artifacts. Finally, we want to go ahead and say that the entry point is .NET and then our DLL, which is one review .dll. The last thing we still want to do is we want to expose our application to listen on a specific port. So the port that we want is going to be 5001, but of course choose whatever you want. 
And we also need to tell ASP.NET that our application is going to be listening on this port. To do this, what we want to do is to set the environment variable, which is called ASP.NET Core HTTP ports. We want to set this to be 5001. And now our application will listen on this port, we're exposing this port, and then all we need to do is to send requests to this port, and hopefully it'll arrive at our application. So if we got this right, then we should be able to say simply .NET build, and let's give it the tag, let's say one review YouTube. And the Docker file is where we're at. So I'm simply going to say dot and let's run this and see if everything works as we expect. And of course I have here a small typo. So this needs to be a dot. And also I copy pasted. So this also needs to be a dot. So let's try this again. Right, so now if we look at our images and we search for we said something YouTube, then we can see that here we have our image. So let's go ahead and now say Docker run. And on our machine, then we want to access port 5001. And we want this to be mapped to the port in the container, which is 5001. Let's also give this the name, let's say one review API YouTube. And the image that we're using is the one review YouTube. Now I'm purposely not running this in detached mode because if there are errors, then I want to see them over here. So if this works successfully, then we'll run it in detached mode. So it seems like everything is running successfully. Let's go ahead and try making a create product request. So we now have the host a bit different than what we had it before. So let's go ahead and update this to be five thousand and one and make sure that we're using the correct host. Great. And now let's make a request. And it seems like it was created successfully using the location header of the response. So I'm reminding you again, let me make things a bit smaller. I remind you again that over here we have a request based on the location header, which gives us the location of the newly created resource. So let's go ahead and make a get request and see if this works successfully and seems like everything is working end to end as we expect. So as you can see, this was really simple. We don't have a lot going on over here. And of course, the application is still pretty small. But as you can see, adding Docker support is extremely simple. Now in the next video, then we're going to be adding a Docker compose file, because I want us to be able to say Docker compose up and have both our application and a Postgres database both start. And that will have seamless integration between our application and the SQL server and then we can start talking to a real database. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to smash the subscribe button and I'll see you there.